What's going on guys? Today we are back with another video and uh, I was kind of wondering what to film today and I went out this morning and uh, I was out pretty early this morning. It's about noon now and I had very flat, not ideal conditions and I was looking at a lot of fish in the graph and what I wanted to film was a snap jigging thing on plastics and it just was not going this morning. Then I was like, eh, should I film some jigging minnow stuff? We've done so much of that. Um, but then we had a little weather change come in and the fish are definitely getting a little bit more active and I think we're gonna get on them here. Um, but one thing's the same, you know, whether we're catching fish or not, we're always going around looking for more fish. This isn't the, this isn't the game where you just find a pot of fish and you sit there all day, right? So even if fishing's slow, a lot of times driving around and finding fish is the best thing you can do because when the bite does get good, like it's going to right now, um, you can come back to a lot of these same pots. So we're about to spot lock down on a big pot of fish and uh, get after it, stay tuned. We're gonna snap jig some post-spawn walleyes. First cast in the pot. Once we finally found them in the wind, they have definitely fired up surly. Look at that. Exactly what we're after there, guys. Beautiful walleye snapping plastics in the wind. There's not a better combination for doing this in the spring than a shoreline which the wind is coming into and a nice little warming trend, getting those fish all excited, warming the water up faster than the rest of the lake. We're gonna throw them back and get right back out there. Right next to the boat. Oh yeah. That is crazy, they're hitting it, dude. It's just totally stalled. Nice walleye though. Second one here that's come like right behind the boat. There we go. Awesome. Pop jigging is too fun. And you find a little pod like this, and normally they're pretty fired up when they're this shallow, and you're bombing a bait way out there, snapping it real aggressive through them. Normally the bites are aggressive and or they really got it when you set the hook on them. And look at that. Jerk Minnow stuck right to the roof of his mouth. That is what we like to see. Very good average size. That's about a 19 incher right there. Beautiful fish. We'll let him go. Let's catch another one. This is a guaranteed fish here. <laughs> when you see him like that, <laughs> I mean, that was just like. Immediate, dude. I saw the podcast is back, called the shot, and I think it's a good walleye. I think he's just kind of skating on top. Oh my gosh. Too cool. It's a good one, too. He just kind of gave up fighting right away. He knew I was too dialed for, for him to fight too much. Come here, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Too much fun in the spring like this. And sand flats are just the perfect spot to do this because although there's a ton of fish on rock and all that good stuff, you can't see those fish. You know, you used to, almost before side imaging, you almost had to pretty much just fish a lot of like the sweet spot rock that you know you could see on sonar, you knew right where the tip of the point was. But once you get good at side imaging, you almost just want to fish plain sand because you can see every single fish sitting on it. Let that one go. Beauty. All right, guys, so how are we fishing the jerk minnow? You know, I've done a, a, quite a few videos on this because I do fish so much of this plastic, but it is an incredibly productive lure to fish. This time of year, I'm mostly fishing it on a quarter ounce, and I'm fishing a lot of those depths that are like five to like 12 feet deep. And uh, yeah, that's that's one of my favorite colors right there. I don't know how well you can see that. I want to say it's called like Arkansas Shiner or something like that, but I'll put it down in the link below. And that gold Google Eye, you can probably, you can probably hear that thing knocking in there. A little bit of extra rattle, great hook on it, and the wire keeper on these baits, these Google Eye jig heads, is awesome. So if you kind of want the ultimate plastic combo, you don't have to glue these ones down just because they stay on so well. It's quarter ounce Google Eye jig. I'll go ahead and link it below. 
and then I tie in basically like a three to four foot um, fluorocarbon lead that's just 12 pound um, fluorocarbon and uh, I use a double uni knot and then 10 pound braid and I'm fishing this on the Elliott rods spinning rod and this is the 6.9 medium fast it's one of my absolute favorite rods you can just do so much with this rod I've talked about that a bunch before you need a quick high-speed reel like the uh, pissy fun carbon x 2000 this is like my all-around power jigging setup right here catch a million fish digging a whole bunch of different plastic swim baits ribbon wrap type stuff but basically what I'm doing and I'm taking it and I'm getting the bait way out there you know these plastics generally work better way away from the boat right just because you can get a lot more action with them and it's not so up and down weird looking motion then all I'm doing is pop keep my rod high pop keep my rod high pop keep my rod high what you don't see me doing is going like this pop and drop the rod then I don't feel the bites and that bait falls much quicker I still want that bait kind of slowly falling down and I'm popping it letting it fall popping it letting it fall sometimes I might double pop it like boom boom let it fall boom boom let it fall and I want to be hitting the bottom every time especially in the spring a lot of these fish might grab it right off the bottom of the lake but a lot of times what you'll feel most of the times it'll go pop bait will be falling boom, and that thing will absolutely explode on it and basically what that jerk is doing when it's down there is going thunk, 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 thunk. And it's kind of real erratic it's just erratic enough um, that it is a great trigger bait but when you do these kind of pops and I'm almost hitting it like on a slack line and then I keep my rod high tight on the fall it's just kind of finessey enough and erratic enough where it's great in the springtime period now we're, we'll work this quite a bit different in the summer but in the spring this is definitely the deal and it's definitely what's working today Oh, very next cast. There is an angry mob of fish back there. Oh, this is a smallmouth. Can't tell what this is. Might be a nice smallie. What is it? Oh yeah, nice smallie. Just a little bit of everything up in there. We're gonna net them just to expediate the process here. Chunker smallmouth there. Not a giant, but there's a ton of them in this lake. That school with the walleyes that are all about that size. Fun to catch. Let's let them go. This is ridiculous. It's just like, how many do you want to catch if you can just continue to cast in this little spot here? Should be any second now. Should be getting thumped. Just too many back in this little corner here. Yep, and there he is. <laughs> it's gotta be a bass, I don't know. Could be a good walleye, I guess. He's digging hard though. Every single cast right now. I don't know, it's a good walleye. <laughs> This is when it gets fun. Straight lighten them up. Quality, quality walleye here. I'm definitely gonna give this one the scoop. Oh yeah. Just popping that little jerk minnow around. This is definitely the nicest one we have caught today. And this is a quality fish. No matter where you go for sure. Pick that jerk minnow right up off the bottom. There we go. Chunks, look at that. Too awesome. We gotta get going though. We gotta keep fishing. We gotta keep casting in them. There's too many there. All right guys, so since we're fishing plastics, you know, what are, what are the advantages of fishing plastics? Why do you guys do it? Why is it, you know, better than live bait in some scenarios? Because live bait, jigging a minnow, which you've been fishing a ton this spring, is incredibly effective in the spring. So why do you go to the plastics? Well, there's kind of a couple reasons, you know. Number one, you can fish much faster and you know you can cover a lot more water you can take that jig in a plastic you can just throw it as mile you can throw it as far as you want and you can work it back generally pretty quick in comparison to how quickly you can work a jig in a minnow so that's a great reason right there you know can cover a ton of water so if i'm fishing this very small pinpointed spot like this tiny little rock spot or this tiny little inside hook in the weeds a lot of times a minnow is a better option right 
Uh, but for raking a lot of these big sand flats like I'm doing today, the plastic's great. Another reason is the aggression, right? You can work up plastic much harder, much more aggressively, and get that reaction bite a lot better without tearing minnows off your hook constantly. So you guys see me snapping my rod all the time? You know, that's to trigger that reaction. It's that pop that triggers the reaction. Same thing goes for like a jig and wrap style lure. When you're really ripping swim baits in the summer, it's that triggering effect. It's that triggering because you can work that bait so hard that it makes those fish bite a lot of times. And the third reason, um, which if you haven't fished plastics, you will definitely learn, is that it gets big bites. Plastics definitely get big bites. A lot of times if I got buddies in the boat and they're all throwing live bait, I'll fish the plastic and get fewer bites, but I might get the big bites, you know? And uh, plastics, really whether it's swim baits, the jerk minnows, they're so good at getting big bites. They're just, you know, it's a bigger profile, number one, and they're, it's aggressive, they make those fish, you know, the, the bigger a walleye is, the more of a predator they become a lot of the times. And uh, a plastics is a perfect offering to get big bites for sure. Certainly. Fish, oh, that feels good. That feels good, good. You can tell he's got me in some cabbage, though. Man, the bites are weird today. Some of them are just absolutely throttling, and other ones, it's like they're just coming at you with it. I have no idea what this is. It's almost fighting like a sideways pike. Oh no, big walleye. Good walleye for sure here. Surly is absolutely losing his mind over the sailboat over here. But look at this walleye. Quality, quality walleye here. Watch out, Surly. Go ahead and scoop him up. Oh yeah. That is a good one right there for Northern Wisconsin. We are 100% on the right fish here. Surly's losing his damn mind over the sailboat behind us right there. Apparently he has never seen a sailboat before. There we go. Look at that. Can't even see that jerk minnow. Absolutely out of sight. Can't even open his mouth. Look at that thing. Gone. Can't even see it. Might need the players for this one even. No. Just barely came out of there. Look at that. <laughs> this is too much fun. It was a slower morning, like I said. But the second it got cloudy and we got some wind, they lit right up. Perfect. Fish on! Something feels like a good fish for sure. Feeling very good. What is it is the question. Nice walleye. These are the ones we are after for sure. Too awesome. Got the perfect combination here. Wind coming up shallow. Water's warming, some overcast. Hungry fish up on a big flat. And that is exactly, exactly what we're after right there. Too awesome. You know, we don't get a lot of upper 20 inch fish in the Hayward area, but very well built. Extremely, extremely quality fish when you get the little knob on their head there. Awesome, <laughs> I'm gonna let that guy go. Let's do that some more times. All right guys, well, that is gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. That was a very fun, quick little bite we had. I always say the best way to catch a lot of fish is to be on the water more than anybody else. And uh, that was definitely the truth today. You know, I had super terrible conditions all morning and uh, super finicky fish. And there's like this little weather change that came through and they just all popped and started biting these. Now I'm probably gonna have to go back to the live bait to get them to bite the rest of the day. because it's gonna be bright sun and low wind the rest of the day now, but it is what it is. Um, snap jigging is a super effective way to catch fish really all spring long. And especially in that early summer period when you start really raking a lot of those big flats that are either like, you know, gravel or rock or sand or fringe weed a lot of times up here in Northern Wisconsin. Snap jigging, something like the Jerk Minnow Jr. on a quarter ounce head is just absolutely killer way to fish. And I'm sure you guys will see us do this in a whole bunch more videos, but I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'm not sure what we're doing next. We got a little bit of a road trip here in the near future and uh, some new water in the near future. So I know you guys like those videos, but if you're not yet, please subscribe, stay tuned for more content and uh, we'll see you guys next time.